and welcome. You're with us here on Aspire. We're coming to you this week from the 212 Bar and Grill here in Mumbai with an action-packed show as always. Here's what's lined up. We tell you how you can get innovative with your bathroom. The PlayStation 4 announced in India and Nokia launches its biggest phone ever. Is the iPad Air a big step forward or just another upgrade? We tell you all you need to know. The talk of the world of art and the entire nation, Christie's first India auction. The big highlights, the star works and the auction pieces. We get you the full lowdown. But before we get to the Christie's auction, here's a look at what's been buzzing this week. It is the festive season and also the biggest season for gifting. In the nick of time, American jewelry brand Harry Winston has released a limited edition of its top-selling Premier Feathers watch collection. Only eight of these exclusive timepieces in 18 karat rose gold with 66 brilliant cut diamonds, an intricate marquetry of feathers on the dial, and a satin finish strap have been made. This one's sure to lure the women. And there's a limited edition hublot for the men. A limited to 50 edition of the 18 karat gold Big Bang is an exclusive monochromatic take on the popular watch style. To get one for yourself, you might have to make a trip to Monte Carlo, Austria, or Switzerland, as this one's not going to be retailed in India. And well, this one's a limited edition, only to become extinct soon. The Volkswagen Group is all set to bid goodbye to its fastest production car, the Bugatti Veyron 16.4, that was launched in 2005. Only 50 more of the Veyron will be made before it goes out of production for good. The news comes in immediately after Lamborghini announced the sale of its last Gallardo to a private collector. This, the Gallardo LP 574 Spider Performante. Painted in a Rosso Mars color, was the 14,022nd Gallardo to have been made since its launch in 2003. The Gallardo has been replaced by the Cabrera. Christie's conducted their first auction here in India this week in Mumbai. The auction house has actually been in India since 1995, but they only debuted here this week. We take a look at some of the masterpieces that were on show, from Hussein and Raza to Sher Gill and Thaya Mehta. Kushbu was tracking the event closely. She gets us the full lowdown on which pieces were the most sought after and how much they actually got at the auction. Here it is, Asalik, number one. So, for three, four, I mean the show. Records broken, new records made. Christie's debut India auction not only brought to the fore India's growing base of art collectors, but also the growing interest in Indian art from around the world. Roaring bids, a unanimous applaud, and there goes the hammer. Sold. Vasudev S. Gaitonde's untitled abstract was the work in the spotlight. The painting sold at nearly triple the estimated price, making it Gaitonde's most expensive work sold at auction and also the most expensive work of modern Indian art sold in India. After Raza Sor Hastra that sold for 16 crore in London in 2010. Gaitonde's untitled was secured by a private collector in the United States through phone bidding. In fact, the master artist's work has been requested by the Guggenheim Museum in New York for the retrospective of the artist to be held next year. And then the work that was the most sought after and the highest estimated among the 83 lots of paintings, the Maisha Sura by progressive artist Tayab Mehta, fetched double its estimate of 9.5 crore. And while it was yet another Tayab Mehta painting, the falling figure that grossed the third highest price, 
It was really Ganesh Pine's untitled work that received tremendous response, achieving a world record price for the artist at auction. Well, I am standing right next to three record-breaking paintings that sold right here at Christie's first ever India auction. The art spoke for itself. The room was full of enthusiastic bidders and collectors. And the record was not just these three paintings, but also the total collection. While Christie's was expecting a total collection of about six to eight million dollars, what it collected at the end of the night was about 16.3 million dollars. Well, that makes this Indian art sale the second highest ever recorded for Christie's worldwide. We've really doubled the high estimate uh, and uh, you know this is really extraordinary. I mean the estimates were attractive but this is a fantastic result uh, and uh, almost just two uh, pieces weren't sold but we've already got interest on those. As we promised, we said we'd be here for another 100 years. We certainly will be back um, starting again next year in December again, if not sooner, um, with another auction. In the room were a, was filled with sophisticated and, and enthusiastic people. The energy of the room is what drove the success. Clearly, it was the energy in the room that was bustling with nearly 400 people that reassured Christie's belief that they must stay put in India for the longer term. And the sales numbers put Mumbai right next to New York and London in the global market for Indian art. One of Christie's aims through this auction was also to tap into new collectors. The auction saw bidding and buying coming from around India, across Asia, the US and Europe, a majority of them being from Asia. This is a trend that we've seen many, many times over, whether it's in our sales in London, New York or particularly more recently in Dubai where to today around 65% of the artworks are sold to Middle Eastern buyers and 35% to non-Middle Eastern collectors. We've been selling Indian art in Hong Kong, London and New York for some 18 to 20 years now and it's clear that if we come here to India and convene the Indian collecting community here on its own doorstep we will create uh, a generate uh, an interest outside India which will be even more meaningful. Nonetheless, while the works at display were truly breathtaking and inspiring, it wasn't difficult to notice that they weren't the key pieces. In fact, what constituted a large part of the collection was works on paper that were priced as low as 60 to 80,000 rupees. Most of these came from the personal collection of Keku and Korshet Gandhi, owners of the prestigious Kimold Art Gallery in Mumbai. 52 works sold from their estate for a total of 26.1 crores. An unexpected sale that comes in at a time when the world is talking about a slowdown. But Christie's was confident about the timing from the word go. We feel the market has evolved and matured extremely well. We also see in India after 2008 when there was a little bit of a blip in the market that things sorted themselves out. The collectors, the connoisseurship is there. People know what are the best work. It's there to now sort of step it up again in a big way. It was back in 1992 when India saw its first international auction conducted by Sotheby's in Delhi. Cut to 2013, 21 years later, it's Christie's first India auction. Well, it is the first, it may set the trend for many more to come. But the big question that we're asking is, why do we need an international auctioneer to actually conduct an auction of Indian art in India itself? If OCEANs had been stronger, maybe this would not have happened. If Saffron Art and OCEANs and Pandol could develop markets in New York, London, Dubai, then maybe this would not have happened. But you know, that's our relative failure and it's their relative success and we must take it in our stride. And Christie's being one of the global leaders obviously sees two major advantages. Firstly, that the Indian has to buy more from the international auctions. And in the last three years, because um, OCEAN sort of uh, went through a difficult period, um, there was a vacuum that got created, so auction houses like Pandol and Christie's are taking that opportunity. We've seen particularly strong bidding coming out of India, and what we see is there's a whole tier of collectors here who, for whatever reason, 
can't bid in New York or London or can't come to Preview Works in New York and London and who have really been encouraging us and saying, why aren't you offering these works at home? Closer home, Christie's also held its first China auction in September in Shanghai, where it sold $25 million worth of watches, wine, jewellery and art. Early this December, rival auction house Sotheby's raised $37 million in its first in China, a market that kept international auctioneers away for many years due to strict regulatory laws and the monopoly of two of the biggest Chinese auction houses, Poly Auction and China Guardian. India's $16.3 million is still far from touching China's strong local auction culture, considering India only has two small-scale auctioneers like Safranat and Pandol after Ocean's shut shop. We opened our market in Russia in 2005. We did the same in the same year with Middle Eastern art. and Both of those art areas have matured very quickly. 2013 will be the year of China and India and, and we really look forward to seeing Indian collectors buying in every sphere at Christie's, not just in Indian art but also art from other parts of the world. And that's the big challenge we're going to be watching closely. For now, India seems to be sitting comfortably in its own art space. As we all know, Indian art has several takers globally as well. Some of the most expensive pieces auctioned worldwide have been from Indian artists. We take a look at the five most expensive such works of art. S.H. Raza's Rajasthan 1 from 1983 fetched close to 5 crore rupees at the Sotheby's Indian art sale earlier this year. Vasudeo Gaitonde's untitled auction for 5.9 crores at the same auction by Sotheby's. A whopping 8 crore for Tayo Mehta's Falling Bird at the South Asian Modern and Contemporary Art Sale held by Christie. Back in 2008, Souza's 1955 painting called Birth sold for 12.9 crores. And the record breaker remains Raja Saurashtra sold for more than 16 crores, making it the most valuable Indian painting to be sold at an auction at Christie's in London. Coming up, we tell you how you can get innovative with your bathroom. Is the iPad Air a big step forward or just another upgrade? We tell you all you need to know.